people coming back to where it all started? What memories that relieve of you when you first think of Ixayali? So I actually grew up in Odisha. I started off, you know, my earlier part of my, all my life was in Odisha. And I actually stayed in Bhandesha very long. And my college was also here. It really feels great. I'm actually coming back after 12 years. So the last time I was here was in 2005. So obviously city, campus, you know, obviously looks great. And that's a fantastic experience, you know, obviously, to come back to it. So how has XIME been the important role in your life so far? Obviously, any business school degree, you know, the importance of it dies out after two, three decades. But I think XME for me has been a very prominent thing. I mean, I was in a company which is tied to XME quite soon. You know, we started the whole uh, analytics business way back in 98. Since then, I have worked with a number of people who are actually XME alumni. So, in terms of my career choice, I have not made too many job changes. Obviously, two of them. I was in GE for five years. That's a place where I was actually hired from campus through Peak Exam. And I moved to Hewlett Packard as well through alumnus. So I have always been in the ecosystem. Is it really the degree? I don't think so. But obviously, I mean, any business school for Michael Wharton or Howard is known because of the alumni. Alumni. Yeah. And I think, you know, the alumni ecosystem has really worked for me. So that is the strength of the school. That's a strength, definitely. You know, I, I don't think we are as strong as the other business schools. But I think just 30 years. Obviously, the other institutions are like almost 100 years old, Howard. And we'll get there. You know, obviously, there are steps and there are challenges for evolution. So, you have a vast experience in leading cross functional teams. What are the major challenges that you face and how did you go to fit them? So, actually, I started with risk management. Then I moved to fine corporate finance and then I moved to strategy. Now I'm doing sales, not doing any of them anymore. So I think the biggest challenge which you have is the marketing and sales, finance, they speak with different languages. And their reward systems are the way they are defined are completely sometimes you know, opposite to each other. So getting everybody on the same page, and I think while we were having the panel discussion or somebody was saying about 30,000 feet, you know, making everybody see the big picture is the biggest challenge. Once people align with you, you know, I guess many organizations Smaller big we waste too much time trying to make progress while there is no alignment. So alignment is a key. I think that's very key when you are doing cross functional team. So with the corporates these days they are talking about digital transformation. So yes. at the same time there is an opinion that it will lead to genres. So what is your take on this? See, I mean, so you have multiple words now. When you say digital transformation, there's of course digital oh, river. There is digital sky, some people are using it, they are calling it digital oil field in the oil and gas industry. Mm -hmm. So all different forms, buzzwords. I think digital is fundamentally a way of how you, it's not really changing anything. You know, it's, it's, at the end of the day, it's you are engaging with customers. It's just the way you engage with customers has becoming different. So for example, I mean, today customers don't want to be you know, called and offered a credit card. Yes. Or offered a car loan. So I think if you look at what what we're seeing in the FSI world. They're saying as you like you guys, you know, as you go to your first job, you should already have a pre-approved loan for a vehicle. After four years, you should have a pre-approved loan, or maybe in between you should have a loan for marriage. So it's almost a system where the money is already there and they know everything about you. They have all the intelligence beforehand. So it's for the money is already there in your account. It's just for you to use it. So it's just a much faster way of working, you know. See, job cuts will always happen whenever we do not actually uh, you know, embrace the change. So if, if we cannot embrace the change, if we cannot come up with newer ways of working, the job cuts you know, obviously end. And that's what is happening in the US now. Yeah. So I think proactively, you know, trying to bring in change and proactively rebalancing the workforce is very important. So what career advice would you like to give for the present? I think the present batch is way more smarter than what we were. We are exposed to a lot of different things. I think we look at the profile of companies and even the career. I'm talking about just career choices you have in management. And those days were still, I think, way before it was Unilever, Citibank, and you know the last, the biggest of the two. 
and you had FMCG, then you had information technology, which obviously is a bit of big role, for example. But I think you have way too much choices today. I mean, my advice would be just, you know, I mean, it's okay to experiment. I, I don't see a problem with it. You can even start your own company at a very young age. Uh, I think somebody on the panel was saying that, you know, you do not get hired as a CEO. So, but I think you can be a CEO even just passing on. And there, there are enough examples. I don't think age uh, or experience is becoming a barrier anymore. So my advice would be, I mean, just go around, feel what you want to do. That's very important. So, who is your favorite professor? My favorite professor. So my favorite professor, I think I like uh, Bani, of course. Uh, and then there's obviously Govind Rajan. I remember Govind Rajan used to have these notices. So he used to write, you know, deadline. Dead if you cross the line. Oh. And then he used, to, he used to call us for quizzes. So, Govind Rajan usually party with us till night, four, five, and then on his so way back, is. way back, he would put a notice and. He used to say, come with your, please come with your books, we will open your exam. He used to say, please come with your pencils and, and common sense. Okay. So, I mean, I, mean, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. Bani is obviously a different uh, style. I remember Bani tell, telling us, he was very angry with us in one class of OFS, no options to choose, perhaps. So, he was telling us, no, you have to decide what you want to do. You want to sell soaps or you want to sell derivatives. It was quite interesting, actually. You know, that time, that, that kind of professors, and I think, you know, not to belittle the others. You know, I think Kausik Shaw was a great guy, DP Dash. Just the whole batch of Dan Rao, you know, we had Ahilya Hajmadi for OB. So I think we fairly, I mean, maybe we are lucky or whatever, we had a very impressive, you know, set of people, you know, from IC, Indian Chatterjee, teaching Boti, Obedullah, with, you know, fairly well known professors in the management industry who actually dealt with the no, our, our faculty has full time, and also some of them were coming in to teach us. Do you think that learning has helped you in your career? A lot. I guess uh, when your fundamentals are so strong, and I think it's important also to understand how does the market perceive us. So I don't think market perceives us very good when it comes to our visibility as compared to an MDI or whatever. But I think from a curriculum standpoint, you know, exam is always being on everybody's mind. You know, even the folks, you know, I obviously interact a huge amount with people from IIMs, they might believe. And there's always this feeling that exam has a very strong, uh, if you hire an exam person, there is some certain degree of, you know, background and fundamentals that you are assured of. So in that way, I think it's, it's a very critical thing to maintain that. Uh, so how do you think that you can do better connections with the alumni? With the alumnus. And the alumni, the alumni will come. So I think the better connection with the alumnus or the alumni is just a step. You know, it's not really an end. It's just a means. What you want to really do is how do you engage with the industry better and how do you make yourself visible, right? Like Stanford is pretty much synonymous with any kind of startup which happens in Bay Area. And so Harvard is very well connected with the East Coast. I don't think Xavier has actually done a good amount of, you know, or a good amount of effort in that area. We don't have a single positioning where we say, when you look at exam, we say, wow, this is like an FMCG, or this is like artificial intelligence, or they are coming up with new apps. So I think that is the key. You know, I don't hear anything about it, not that I hear anything about MBI as well. I'm saying Indian business schools overall have not gone the NCR Stanford way. They're too focused on placing people in good companies and publishing this thing. But I don't think there has been, like, Mark Zuckerberg, right? He's a Harvard robot. So I mean, I, I don't, I don't see that happening, you know, from the Indian level. That is actually very key, you know, how you start building companies, you know, with one, with one year or two year of experience. Thank you Thank so you much. Sir. For Perfect. Your time. Thank you.